Hello everyone and welcome to Laboratory M3 where we will cover superficial and deep back muscles. The first group of muscles we're going to talk about are going to be your back muscles. And you'll see on your list that I've divided these into your muscles name, the action. And when I say action, that is what this muscle is able to do to your body when the muscle contracts, when it shortens. And innervation is the nerve that goes over to supply that muscle, to allow it to contract. The vast majority of these I'm going to have you cross out. This particular list, I'm having you leave the innervation for trapezius. But these other four muscles, you want to write branch of the brachial plexus. Our first muscle is the trapezius. And this muscle is very much kite shaped. So if you can imagine it on the other half of the body, the right side of the body, you would see a kite shape. Um, also in this screencast, I've listed the origins and insertions. Let me just quickly explain what that is. The origin is going to be the area where the muscle attaches that has no movement. So in this case, it's the skull, the cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, and then the insertion is where the muscle attaches, where the actual movement will occur. So in this case, it's the spine of the scapula, your acromion, and then this muscle wraps anteriorly to insert onto the clavicle as well. So the action of our scapula is to elevate and depress and adduct the scapula. So what I want you to do is take your right hand and put it on your left shoulder, and I want you to elevate your shoulder, so base, uh, elevate your scapula. So basically you are shrugging your shoulder on up. And you could probably feel, if you still remember these bone, um, bone markings, your spine of the scapula, your acromion and your clavicle are all lifting together as you do this, and trapezius is the muscle that's assisting us in doing that. Innervation here is going to be cranial nerve number 11, which is an accessory nerve. This is one of those special muscles that gets innervated by a cranial nerve. All of the other cranial nerves are really within the head, except for the vagus nerve, which is cranial nerve number 10. We'll get into that next quarter. But I wanted you to know this one because it's a special one. And then when we get into the nervous system, you could cross this one off your list. You're going to say, I already know this one. And here's that kite-shaped muscle, the trapezius. I just wanted to give you another view. Latissimus dorsi is this muscle down here that's blinking. Um, this is also called the swimmer's muscle. And it is going to originate from the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae down to the sacrum and then it curves over the iliac crest and inserts onto the intertubercular sulcus of the humerus. Remember you do not have to know the origins and insertions for your theory exam nor your practical exam. I'm just giving you these so you kind of understand the attachments and uh, understand the location of the muscle a little bit more. Now the action of latissimus dorsi is going to be adduction, extension, and medial rotation of the arm. This makes sense that it's on the arm even though it's a back muscle because the insertion is on our humerus. And innervation, I know it says thoracodorsal nerve, but we're going to go with the branch of the brachial plexus. Now the other three muscles left on our back are going to be levator scapulae, rhomboid minor, and rhomboid major. So let's look at those next. We have levator scapulae here, and I always think levator scapulae sounds like elevator, right? So we start at C1 and we take the elevator to C4, okay? And then all of these are going to insert on the medial border of the scapula, but they're at different areas according to the spine. So this one happens to be above the spine. The action is to elevate the scapula. So what a perfect name for a muscle. Levator scapulae and the action is to elevate the scapula. And innervation I want you to know as branch of brachial plexus. Next we have rhomboid minor. And this is a teeny muscle. It originates from cervical vertebrae 7 and thoracic vertebrae 1. And it's going to insert at that medial border of the scapula at the spine. 
and action is adduct scapula. So you're bringing your shoulder blades closer together, closer to the vertebral column. And the innervation I want you to know as the uh, branch of the brachial plexus. This is like a little mnemonic that I used Nintendo DS to memorize dorsal scapular nerve, but because we're not memorizing that nerve, don't worry about it. Next we have the rhomboid major muscle, and this is the larger one below rhomboid minor. This originates from vertebrae T2 to T5. Insertion is medial border this time, but below the spine of the scapula. Action is the same as minor to adduct the scapula, and innervation I want you to know as branch of the brachial plexus. So throughout our lectures, I want you to always remember that major muscles usually almost always hold up minor muscles. So just like we saw back in here, this major muscle is holding up the minor. Okay. All right, what is this muscle here? If you said trapezius, you are correct. This one? If you said latissimus dorsi, you are correct. Now we have our, that should say deep muscles of the back. <laughs> Sorry about that. We have erector spinae, and this um, on your lab list, I sh it, it, for some reason got my lining wrong, um, but erector spinae is made up of three separate muscles. We have iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. And then two other deep muscles are your splenius and your multifidus. So erector spinae are, is, like I said, made up of iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. Iliocostalis is named so because it originates from the ilium and then inserts itself onto the costals, the ribs. Longissimus is the longest of all of um, the erector spinae muscles. And then number three here, spinalis, that is the closest to the spine. So the way we're going to remember this is I love spaghetti because who does not love spaghetti, right? So I for iliocostalis, I love for longissimus, and spaghetti for spinalis. And these muscles start dividing at the level of T12. So that is at this level right here. Below this area, we would just call this erector spinae because it's where all of their tendons kind of merge together. And then we also have splenius here, and this is going to assist us in extending our, um, our neck. And we also have the multifidus muscle, and this is a very deep muscle, and they're the most developed in the lumbar area, and it's going to assist us to twist our spine. Like, you know that dance from the 50s, I think? It's called the twist, maybe? Yes, no? If not, YouTube some videos.